Joey Stone and Harry Tiller that will lead us to green flag racing as we take off from Iowa Speedway. Round two of season six of core is underway, and immediately Tiller does a nice job oh, here to we make go. his way in front. Up oh, there they go. Up oh, yellow flag already. <laughs> Yeah, huge pileup. We caught it just in the corner of the camera. J Jonathan Cadell over once. And, uh, well, I didn't think they were going to wait this early. Unfortunately, it looks like some of the drivers maybe got some hot lap practice. Maybe not as much uh, pack practice as they were uh, ready for here, James. Dive into corner entry deep and go deeper than they probably should. Well, and you end up yeah. in trouble more often than not. <laughs> you saw right there. I mean, literally on the replay. Uh, Case just dives in the corner, and I don't know where he was going because he was carrying way too much speed. Just tags Jonathan Cadell. Cadell basically the center of that. He is not going to be a happy camper. It's going to be early natty lights for uh, that driver of the 69 car. Early Watching natty lights. Here. We, 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 we really are on Thanksgiving time at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. Right? That, yeah, that, James, I, you know, I, I, I'm not amazing at Oval. Oh, there it is. There's the shot. Great shot there by our producer, Zach Johnson. But Butler's already in the top 10. Goins already in 11th. And we ran, what, like a lap? Now, granted, they got some help. No doubt about it. But as we go back to green flag racing, those two, I think, are worth watching as Harry Tiller takes off. And Vargas will try and get to his outside. It looks like we make it through turn number one and two this time. Everybody able to hold on to it. We go side by side. Harry Tiller at the bottom of the racetrack. Vargas up on the way high side here. Run the Kyle Larson line. He'll get the run off four. And at the line, give it to Ryan Vargas, new leader. Take a look out the back, the rear of the 12. There he is on camera. Hello, Corey. How we doing here on this fine Wednesday evening? Giving a high five. Oh, there they're going three wide. How about that at Iowa? Maybe not the best choice there, James. Uh, oh, there it uh, goes. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Unfortunately, that ain't going to work there, bud. Not really a low. Oh, he just he bounced it off the wall. I think tried to get away from the wall. Wasn't able to catch the car in time. It just tags Frisch. So unfortunately, Corey looking at the camera instead of looking at the racetrack might have caused that one. So uh, we'll send apologies to the 58 on behalf of the 12 car. And yeah, you can see coming out of turn four, they make a little bit of contact. And Corey with that little bit of a wiggle comes down and around goes the 58. Caution number two out on the racetrack. As the field pulls off, we get set for the restart to come on lap 23. They take off, and David Oh, there goes TCB. Well, okay, so TCB decides to wreck, and <laughs> we'll stay green otherwise, as they're four wide a little bit further back. Yeah, they that did not work. We'll get a camera on that when we can, but there's cars all over the place. They're three wide. Sorry to jump on your toes there, James, but uh, I was not expecting to see his car spun off to the inside on the restart. They all survived, though. And three wide. Oh, yep. There goes another one. Can't tell who that is. Uh, the 18. Case Callum Case. Back. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Case, Case ends up sideways. Vargas has got the lead from Shieldhouse. Shieldhouse trying to fight back up top. And Harry Tiller's just consistently been there. Top three. One of the better runs we've seen from Tiller in a long time. As you see the progressive banking in play at Iowa immediately. Three wide for the lead. And Shieldhouse just about lost it off a turn four higher than everybody else and i don't know whether or not that's him saving tires or him just trying to find more speed or what i like he has a game plan i can tell it's david he's one of the most cerebral drivers in the sim i can think of on a regular basis it's just a matter of what that plan is is ryan vargas got a shot from harry tiller in the middle of one and two i i don't think harry's long for this world if he keeps this up that is not a driver i'd want to be knocking on the door of because vargas can turn very quickly and end your day if you're not careful. So he's going to try it again, though, down into one. And look at how much more speed he's carrying, only to have to get on the brakes so he doesn't run into Vargas. Once again, not very good on those tires. As here comes Shieldhouse on the outside of Sean Butler. These two side by side as well, right behind him. Ledford Billiard supply number 19 still in front of this. And, and I also maintain that there's probably an alternate universe where Briar and Cameron Ledford are actually cousins. They look so alike. I kid you oh, not. Oh, he turned him. Oh, David got into the back of Tiller. Tiller going to hold on to it. Caution flag going to fly. But yeah, I don't know what happened there, but either David had had enough or Tiller got out of the gas early. They go down the back straightaway and what? I, I can't tell. I like it, it. I don't know why he would check did, up. Did the did. 
Harry get the wall coming out at two, maybe, and that slowed him yeah. down. Yeah, that's that's what happened. He did. He yep, caught the there wall it is. Corner exit, and yeah, and and David did not expect that in the slightest. So, uh, I just unfortunate racing incident that you can't really do anything about. And gonna go into the restart zone here on the power is Vargas green flag back in the air side by side looks like everybody gets going without incident this time three wide back in the back is there side by side for first and through one and two you're, you're, you're out here trying to jinx it as Sean Butler gets a good drive off to the bottom he'll make moves Vargas still up on that high line three wide a little bit further back and big trouble a little bit further back two cars hard in the wall trouble That's here I think Cosman and Malad are the two that ended up in the fence. Indeed, they were. As you see, Cosman now rolling down the banking with heavy damage, so he will have to take his fast repair here. Malad still working his way back down to the apron. Yeah, four wide. Four wide at Iowa, James. Not, not, not going to work. Michael P. Frisch with the I, no, I, I wouldn't call it an intentional right rear hook by any stretch of the imagination. No, but no, that's, that's hard racing. He he did right rear hook him, but uh, they were all racing oh, for man. the same real estate effectively. And there's, I mean, if you're Milan, what what can you do? Anything? And Butler Vargas, your front row Shieldhouse is there, and Garrett Smithley is in the top five for the oh, first time Vargas. tonight as they stack up oh, and there they boy. go. Oh no. It's almost every one of them. That that was everybody from about ninth or so on back, I'm pretty sure. Good this gracious. There's the 12. That car's wrecked. He's not getting away from the law anytime soon. Oh, yeah. Corey going to end up dead last. He's the biggest loser out of that whole mess. But, oh, boy. Well, we'll back it up. And, uh, I mean, Vargas triggered that. But what happened? Stack up on the restart. So you see Vargas try and get going. And I couldn't tell whether or not he's checked up or just couldn't get going or whether or not everybody behind him tried to anticipate it more. That's the tricky thing looking back at this. And I, I haven't been able to piece it together off the replay. I, ah, it's tough. It's tough. Either, either Vargas missed it or Shieldhouse tried to anticipate it and then had to check up. And then you see all this happening on your screen. That's the end result. Yeah, we made it work. Is the base car gonna base truck gonna dive in this time and the field gonna be in control with Sean Butler into the restart zone. He gonna check him up. He wants another accident. Green flag back in the air. Well, they tried to wreck a little bit further back. They tried as best they could, but then they all got at least double file. TCB shooting the gap through the middle there, trying to go three wide as Butler the Pratt. Pretty much everybody here in the top five still door to door. Oh, you like a little bit of three wide there with Cosman. It looks like Malad Radman. And then on the outside, looks like Gabe Wood in that deal. 4 car. They're going to sit. They're going to get a double file, at least as we ride on board with Cosman. Beaming us video all the way from across the pond. And so far, decent run going for the 84. Yeah, Cosman had that unlucky run in with Michael P. Frisch where he got turned, but he's rebounded nicely. Currently in a top 10 spot as Milad got the wall with somebody. I think Gabe Wood was the other corner was outside, but those two make contact. So Cosman will get a little bit more track position as everybody else behind tries to regroup. Everybody able to because Sean got loose on the exit of turn uh -huh. two and Breyer was able to roll momentum on the top side as the yellow flag is out again. Cosmo's in trouble, as is Joey Stone. Those two in the fence on the front straightaway, yellow flag out again. Uh, this was yet again another battle pack. Harry Tiller just there to the outside. And somehow, yeah, I think Tiller, or yeah, Tiller, I think, Turn Joey down into Cosman is the easiest way to explain that, but it all looks like a byproduct of hard racing. I think they needed another lane there, James, ultimately. They come out of four, they all wash up the track, and, well, there's a wall there, guys. If we get a yellow here before the white, we certainly have the opportunity for some fun, as they are they are properly sideways here, center of the corner. Brian LaPrade is crab walking through one and two, three and four, everywhere just about. Now he'll go up to the high line to try and preserve tires. Yeah, a little bit of side-by-side -side back here. This is Cozy, Garrett Smithley, and Gary Owen, as well as throw David Childhouse trying to make up all the spots he lost in the middle of this as the top four have single filed out. You can see Cozy diving to the inside once again. Not sure how much is left of those tires on the 99 after he went for the Von Gittin Jr. Special in a one. Was able to hold on to it, though. Now Gary Owen to the inside. 
Owen there. White flag out here for Brian LaProud. The front four have stretched out. They are separated by about eight tenths of a second and not much action between them. A little bit further back, three wide for position right around Cozy and company. But Briar LaProud got to the lead, got Butler to the inside, rolled momentum on the high line, and Briar LaProud will come to the line to win the first race of our doubleheader in the Nebraska Corn is better, but unfortunately we're in Iowa 150 for season six of Core. There's a big hit there to, uh, I believe that was the 82, Case Collin back once again. And we are underway with the second half of the doubleheader here from Iowa, and we are back to action as they thunder through the banking in one and two in this opening lap of the second part of the Nebraska Corn is better, but unfortunately we're in Iowa 153 Y for the race lead. Cody Higgin at the bottom as Rusty checks up. Big wreck on the back straightaway. Fly guy, I think, in trouble. Yellow flag is out. Yeah, it's going to be uh, the 58 of Michael Frisch you see on screen, the 99 of Michael Cozy Jr. Breyer was in that, I believe, TCB as well. No, I think TCB might have gotten away. No, he was in that as well as, as you mentioned, Fly Guy. We'll get a look. We saw that uh, develop just out of turn number two. Here's the replay. Three wide once again at Iowa. That's always a fantastic idea. Oh, four, yep. Unfortunately, Arrow got a little bit tight. TCB got into him. And then it was just a chain reaction from there. Frisch, Cozy, and Briar all being involved. Agreed and look at the jump from Harry Tiller all the way to the outside to try and make it four wide for the race lead. They'll go back to three, but Tiller will roll the high line all the way to the front door to door with Rusty Wallace for the race lead. Opening lap as Cosman catches the wall further back. Yeah, I think Cosman was so worried about not running over Corey, he put himself in the wall, and they managed to hold on to it. Yep, here we go again, four wide. This is totally going to work. No, it isn't. They'll, they'll hang on to it. They'll go three and two wide, so a little bit smarter here, but head back into turns one and two once again. Three wide, car washing up that shield house on the way extreme outside. They'll manage to hold on to it here. We've made it a lap and a half, and they haven't binned it. Rusty now on the charge. Back to the front as Tiller loses grip a little bit. He almost lost it. Corey steady. I, I saw Cosman check up and just about run Corey over in the middle of one and two. As who is that with the elbows out? That's Joey Stone who drove down into Cody Higgin just a little bit. They are a, a casual three and four wide down oh, the back. There we go. Is they wreck further back? Garrett Smithley around as we go not to yellow but instead we stay green flag racing it's a single car incident so we'll keep on going yeah you're saving tires but just don't light up your ears doing it Ooh, car out of the that's tcb look out tcb slides to the inside and yet again another one car incident so yellow flag though does come out this time the caution here i think there was something else that happened Ooh, that was frisch frisch just got in a little bit hot on tcb spins them around tcb tries to save it and uh 900 horsepower not able to save it comes back down in front of traffic caution is out for that one so that's our caution but i want to talk to well he's coming down pit road let's wait until pit stops are over after that i want to talk to the guy who's just led a ton of laps here because we never get to talk to him Shieldhouse beginning to move and beginning to go. Meanwhile, Cosman continuing to work that bottom lane and look for something. But Shieldhouse, again, is just able to stand on the gas pedal on corner exit and keep the spot. If anything, he's starting to gap Cosman a little bit. It was maybe a car length that now has grown to about a car length or two, especially when they go down the front and the back straightaway. And all the while, they've kept Michael P. Frisch right at about an eight-tenth of a second mark, although Frisch is going to have another battle on his hands because Milad Radman has caught him so we'll have a battle for first and then we'll have a battle for third simultaneously yeah I was gonna this is the point I wanted to make but uh, I want to pull out my Chris Collinsworth hat because here's a guy who Milad ever since coming on iRacing I mean this guy don't don't count him out he's got an I rating of 4600 he is not you know the console guy that's that's kind of who we've seen in YouTube for a very long time but ever since he's hopped on iRacing, he has been rapid. David Childhouse still holding off Cosman. His Cosman's actually in the wall. And just like that, watch out on the apex, guys. Bradman went to go a little bit low. Sean got his quarter panel. They all save it. Back to turn one. 
So Cosman will slide a little bit further back. That'll give Michael P. Frisch second. Oh, oh and there, there goes go. Malai. Malai got turned into the outside wall hard. Yellow flag is out. I think Cosman hooked him. I want to go back and see the replay, but that was big, big trouble in turn two. That was one of the hardest wrecks we've seen all night long. And it it was, I mean, and it it's was just barely. Done. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's there's a difference between intent right hooking somebody and I mean just barely clipping and that was the just barely clipping variant of it It was not much But when you've got these bumps in the middle of the corner and they're not as pronounced in the middle of the racetrack of one or two as they are down low, but they're still there and it's enough to upset the car slide you up the racetrack and Fine margins are all you need sometimes to create incidents like that We go back to green flag racing here at Iowa not too much longer to go here just past halfway in our nebraska corn is better but unfortunately we're in iowa 150. james pike cisco scaramuza bringing you all of the racing from the virtual iowa speedway is david schildhaus and michael cozy jr fight door to door schildhaus to the front cozy now fighting fresh the michaels go after it as sean butler rides behind them both and we'll see how they want to sort out second third and fourth yeah, it's a little bit of a battle behind them as well. You see in the corner of your shot, just all sorts of craziness. Yeah, there's the shot. You can see everybody back there, including that, that is that 77 high V Ford of DT trying to make his way through the field. The first side by side of everybody here is Joey Stone and Gary Owen. Gary Owen up at the top side in that 24 Kia. He's going to try and make it happen off the corner. He will clear Sloppy Joe's. They head back to turn number three. Joe going to dive it back in. Because meanwhile, up at the front, they're doing the same sort of thing. Oh, Harry Tiller was sideways on corner exit. He almost spun it in front of the field and then gathered it back up, but lost tons of track position back to 18th now as Frisch continues to chase down Cozy and Cozy continues oh. to break the fight. The shield house is going just about sent himself into the inside wall on the back straightaway and will fall out of the top 10 and maybe lose more spots. Here. Yeah, and all Gary did was he followed Sean through the corner. Sean got loose out of two, and oh, problems, TCB around. Will we see the caution? No, car to the bottom. He's going to hold on to it. We stay green here. Great run there for Cozy to try and keep everybody else at bay, but Shieldhouse continuing to hang on as best he can, but Cozy with that big drive down to the bottom will try and slide up and clear Shieldhouse out of turn four. Won't do it yet, but he's got a nose ahead to lead at the strike. Yeah, the Alta Chevy trying to make it happen into one here. He'll clear Shieldhouse for the moment. Can he slide job up in front of him? No, not quite clear. And uh, they'll continue to race. Now he does finally clear Shieldhouse, and that is going to be Michael Cozy officially to the lead as we head back to three and four. Yeah, that's, a, that's a fair point as he bounces it off of the fence to try and hang on. He is drifting. He is sideways, and he still hasn't come down pit road yet. He, I, knowing Harry, he's just going to keep it out there until the right rear blows off the uh, the car. So he is gunning for speed, but unfortunately he is all alone on that tire strategy because his tires are gone. Uh, uh, in real life, the sun has gone down and the moon has come up. We still haven't figured out who's going to lead tonight with the cup, though. Briar LaPrade got race one. Michael Cozy Jr. still in control of race number two. I, unfortunately, James, this is a situation where... I think they're running the same line because that's all the car wants to do, but Cozy is going to force it down to the bottom in three and four. We'll see how much time uh, either of them gain on each other. It stagnates for the most part, 3.8 at the line. I just don't know if Frisch has enough time. Going to take a big mistake now for Cozy to give this one away. Frisch is going to have a few more shots to try and sneak this one out, but Michael Cozy Jr. has controlled this race in the second half. He'll come off a turn four with one lap to go to victory lane at Iowa. Yeah, Harry Tiller trying to bring out the yellow, but it ain't going to happen. White flag in the arms of Barney, and Cozy right now looks far enough away. He's gained another a tenth or so on Frisch. It's up to point five. He looks to be in the clear. It was a 62 to a 76 at the line the last time by. That's all the gap that Michael Cozy Jr. needs for the man for Altus Esports to roll away, slide it sideways on corner exit, and come across the line to win the second race of the doubleheader here at Iowa. Michael Cozy Jr., winner of race two in round two in season six of core. And the Nebraska corn is better, but unfortunately, we're in Iowa 150.